Hi and welcome to a video update from the Fire Brigade Union. It's the 23rd of January and we're here at Smithfield Market in London, joined by FBU General Secretary Matt Rack. Now Matt, there was a ceremony here today. Can you tell us the significance of the ceremony today and actually why this plaque is here behind us? Yeah, Sam, this is uh, the 23rd of January, as you say. It's the 60th anniversary of a major fire here at Smithfield Market, which destroyed the poultry market uh, on the 23rd of January in 1958. And it's also a fire at which two firefighters lost their lives, a station officer, Jack Fort Wells, and a firefighter, Richard Stocking, from Clark and Well Fire Station. Uh, and we're here to do, uh, to do a commemorative event, but also to unveil this uh, plaque uh, part of the union's red plaque scheme which we've launched through the Firefighter 100 lottery uh, and we, we had support from the London Fire Brigade, from the Smithfield Market Traders, from the City of London, uh, from uh, retired firefighters, uh, a nice ceremony to mark a, a tragic event. Now Matt, as you say, we had firefighters from all over the country here today, a packed place, market traders joined us. But of course, there's a real significance behind this fire and the lessons that were learned from it. I know you've done a lot of work on it. Can you tell us the lessons that came out of this fire for all the firefighters since? Yeah, I think it was a real uh, turning point. Firefighters had been raising concerns, particularly about breathing apparatus, for some years before this particular incident. Fi uh, breathing apparatus, obviously a basic tool of the trade. Uh, the, at the time, they were wearing uh, oxygen proto uh, sets. And I think three particular things stand out to me. First of all, that the union and firefighters had identified that with smoke there was no way of reading the gauges on the sets uh, and there was an immediate demand for some system of uh, low pressure warning which now is standard uh, on breathing apparatus equipment. Secondly, that uh, there was no system for a, a BA wearer in distress to alert their colleagues uh, and uh, obviously people will know there are now distress signal units and various automatic equipment uh, that uh, we have today. Uh, and thirdly, and probably most significantly, was a question of BA control. Uh, at the time, the London Fire Brigade had systems of BA control, but only on the control units, which only came on after incidents were five pumps or greater. So the first attendants, including the two firefighters who lost their lives, had no system of BA control. So tragically at the inquest it was found that there was no record of when the two firefighters went missing and no record of the time at which search procedures commenced, I think highlighting the problems uh, that, uh, that occurred at that incident. And this was a real uh, drive for action. There was a meeting of station representatives very shortly after that uh, passed a resolution calling for changes. The union wrote to the Central Fire Brigade's Advisory Council, which had been set up after the, under the 1947 Fire Services Act to set standards about training, equipment procedures, and very quickly the CFBAC set up a committee and made recommendations. Uh, an important point to note is in 2004 the CFBAC was abolished and part of its criticism, the criticism that was made was that it was slow and uh, held back change. Actually if you read what happened after Smithfield it moved very very quickly. So many of the procedures that we as firefighters today take part in in regards to breathing apparatus can be traced back to this fire and the lessons that the union pushed to be learned for afterwards. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think uh, yeah. it's a, a clear turning point. There had been other fires where firefighters had died and some of these points had been raised, but I think it was Smithfield that spurred lots of people into action and changes were made very quickly. There, there will be lives of firefighters that have been saved as a result of the sacrifice made by Fort Wells and Stocking and the changes that were made at the time. Now Matt, you've just mentioned the two firefighters that are lost. It's absolutely tremendous. It's 60 years on. You know, their colleagues gathered here today to remember them. And we turn their attention to this, this beautiful plaque behind us. Now this comes out of an initiative run by the union. Can you tell the firefighters out there how they can get involved in financing and supporting initiatives like today? Well, what we noted uh, as part of this is the union centenary year, as you know, Sam, and we wanted to leave a legacy. And the legacy, one part of the legacy we wanted to leave was to make sure that these things are recorded better. We find there's a complete uh, uh, mix in how incidents are recorded, how fatalities are recorded. Uh, this is now the second red plaque that we've launched, we, and we've only been able to do it because of the Firefighters 100 lottery. Uh, that's specifically set up with five good causes in mind, one of which is commemorative uh, uh, events, initiatives, 
uh, records and plaques like this one. Um, and we couldn't do it without the Firefighters 100 Lottery. So I'd urge people to sign up, uh, participate in the lottery, but encourage your workmates, friends and family to do so also. And they can do that at uh, www.firefighters100lottery.co.uk. Mark, thanks very much. And thanks for the events today as well. Thanks very much.